today is February 19th. And we're doing, I've immediately forgotten, One Section's Robot. Is it Business and Robot? Business and Robot. I always like instantly forget as soon as he tells me. Business in the front, robot in the back. <laughs> Today's the last teenth of February, after which is old age, and then February withers and dies, at least until next year. Listen, but, it's a weird, warm weather winter. But it's got that extra day. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's going to keep clinging on way after it's been put on life support. Is Europe still drowning from all the storms? Because we are. Yeah, we're still We've kind had of an unusual amount of rainfall. And we were supposed to get a couple of days without rain. Weather.com was like, no rain tomorrow. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> that was a lie. It didn't rain here, did it? It's supposed to rain uh, like on and off. I guess it's over now, but there, there was like 40%. It hasn't, it didn't rain yesterday at all. The, I'm up. the, uh, the building's emergency bilge pumps have been working uh, double overtime. <laughs> <laughs> did we. Uh, Wendell, you described this thing where we thought that we were getting cookie sludge dumped into our basement, but it wasn't. It was that scene from Dogma. The cookie sludge thing? <laughs> it was not cookie sludge, but it was sludge. <laughs> it's human waste. <laughs> it's cookie sludge from the cookie place. <laughs> well, speaking of human waste, Qualcomm says it's crap. It's crap that they have to renegotiate their licensing contracts. It's not fair. And they're going to appeal it. Qualcomm makes a case to appeals court that it did not hurt competition. The company argues before the Ninth Circuit panel of three. It's like, look, running a global multinational is dirty, dirty business. Look at Huawei. Look at all of these companies engaging in wildly unethical and perhaps even economically hedonistic behavior. Qualcomm is probably doing the least amount of that of any company that I've seen in a long time. But they didn't have that weird deal <laughs> where it was like, hey, you got two choices. You can buy our products and you can pay us, or you can buy our competitors' products and you can pay us. But it's like, wait. But then there was that time that Apple literally gave Qualcomm trade secrets to Intel and was like, come on, guys, do this. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the <laughs> appeals court thinks about it. I think they'll do fine either way. Well, if you're one of those people who likes to try and rush in and grab the latest .com, I bet who you think got coronachan.com. Oh, they're probably wealthy by now. Well, I doubt Do it. we know if that exists? <laughs> it definitely it has exists. to. I would think it would have uh, to, but I, I haven't I, checked. So who the, knows? Click that at your own risk or look that up at your own risk. All of the made-up domain names that we have ever mentioned offhand no. as just being super hilarious people have actually bought. There would probably be uh, an AI at this point because they're so cheap. You can just snap them up at a whim. It doesn't really cost you much, but wait. The price of a .com domain is set to rise, and some sellers aren't happy. It's not going up by much. It can go like, up a, it can oh, go up a maximum of like 10% a year or something like that. I think it's 40% over yeah, a certain number of years. But that could be in perpetuity, and that adds up fast. Yeah, so especially if you have 10% multiple. a year is huge. $7.85 is going to $10.26. So, but if you have more than one domain. Lock in those five-year contracts is the lesson. Yeah. You want your domain. Don't get caught. And it's only for .coms. The other top-level domains cost different amounts. But they want to raise everything. They're, they're lobbying. Didn't .org just raise? Well, that had that whole weird yeah, <laughs> that's control so weird. of it got shifted. And that's just a crazy thing. Trolls. And you say only 10%. That's ten, a lot. Ten percent can be a lot or little. You know, ten percent of a pie, nah, not that much. Ten percent of all global credit card transactions, <laughs> quite a bit. Apple Pay is on pace to account for ten percent of all global card transactions in 2020. That's only February. They might accelerate because you know Apple, but people just like that gosh darn convenience of their iPhone. Everybody else has to use QR codes, but Apple has the near field communication so you can feel fancy. Now, I'm just gonna point out something. We've got a wall of about 20 or 25 devices that are like phones and tablets and crap. And- uh, The mobile device lab. They all, uh, they connect with USB-C or like the mini USB or like, uh, or the Apple lightning cables. And the only cables that just completely disappear from the charging rack are the Apple lightning cables. 
Are you insinuating? It's not me. <laughs> no, I, I have a charger for the iPad, but I keep it in my iPad oh, sleeve. The, the iPad's USB-C. It's, yeah. only, it's only the lightning cables. They just disappear. So can we extrapolate that Apple users are thieves <laughs> and scum? I'm just saying. Based on that? Just throwing it out there. We don't even have that many people like I know. in our wing who what's use a, Apple products. What's an Apple.com lightning cable cost? Well, like 20 bucks. Hey, save 20 bucks. Just well, save if you, it. If you buy it from Apple, it's like a hundred. What? That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, no, ours came from China. They look real, but they're not. You know, and, and clients, when I I show them around the office and they look at that mobile device lab, they're like, "Are those fake Apple cables?" And then they, just, they, walk right <laughs> they throw up in their mouth a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, clearly I've chosen poorly. I need yeah. to get some air. <laughs> Well, we talked about NVIDIA and their new cloud gaming service, which, mm, based on the feature list, seems like it's way better than Stadia and some of the other offerings. But perhaps it was too good, because the industry seems to be snubbing them all of a sudden. NVIDIA's GeForce Now is losing all Activision Blizzard games, a bad side for cloud gaming. So that tells me that Blizzard Activision thinks they can make more money off of you if they control or have some license of where you play your games. This is, this is terrible. This is a terrible precedent. Now the weird thing about this, or maybe it was the calculated thing, is during the beta phase, Blizzard Activision was on board. Hmm. What changed? No what one knows. Changed? And I think they mentioned, uh, oh yeah, so Capcom, EA, Konami, Remedy, and Rockstar, and Square Enix all have... Uh, they don't let their whole catalog be played. They think they can make more money charging more Are money. We, is this going to be the Netflix thing? Yeah. Where everybody has their own yep. cloud service? Guaranteed. Jesus. Please I think, no. I mean, oh. well, you know you know how obsessive I am about the whole virtualization thing? They've been trying to stuff that genie back in the bottle for like five years. There's a, uh, there's a guy at Craft Computing who did the, uh, like, a, doing that kind of, like, Stadia-like game streaming. But you, if you want to do it without a subscription uh, license for the software, you have to use really old hardware, and it barely works. So I think all of these companies are looking at, like, this whole, your computer is somewhere else other than you are, and think that it's just going to be a fabulous money maker, and they all want a piece of it, but they're all actually really stupid. Uh, well... Speaking of streaming services who are all of a sudden worried about their market dominance because everybody's getting into the game, how about Netflix? <laughs> but the person coming after, or the entity coming after Netflix now is not who you'd expect. It's not AT&T or NBC or HBO. It's a book publisher. <laughs> Netflix loses bid to dismiss $25 million lawsuit over Black Mirror Bandersnatch. This is because in that movie on Netflix, you choose your own adventure. Normally with Netflix, you go and you watch a movie on Netflix. But this is a movie where when you watch it, it's like, which We're thing would you like into, to do? Into so chapters. It's sort of blurring the lines. It's like a choose your own adventure book. They mention that in the show. And uh, the judge in his ruling, is this is kind of misleading. I think that the ruling, the judge basically says, uh, look, this is clearly an artistic use and this is probably fine. But I'm super bored, so I'm just going to let this proceed. I want to get my name in the paper. <laughs> so ChooseCo LLC is the company that owns Choose Your Own Adventure. And that's a trademark. And I had no idea that all those books one came from one publisher. Yeah, I would have thought that that was just like a wider thing. Because I remember reading a lot of those books growing up. Well, they own... You can't just print a book that's Choose Your Own Adventure. Now, in this case, is it different enough? Hmm? Now, the one thing that might screw Netflix here is that ChooseCo claims... Netflix approached them about a license, yeah. but they didn't oh. like the deal, so they just did it anyway. Yeah. Better to ask forgiveness than permission. Exactly. Well, they did. They might have the the standards for what makes that okay, according to the judge, are absurdly low. So it's like you know you're you're advised that your lawsuit's probably not going to succeed, but we can you know proceed. Let's hear your arguments. This is select your own activity, <laughs> which is totally different. <laughs> Just say, like, choose your path. I don't, you gotta take the word choose out. We should do our really? uh, select your own activity with unpublished YouTube videos where, like, each one links to another one and then you can choose which one. Then they take out the cards, though. Yeah. They did, yeah. Which I was kind of bummed about, but. We could do it in the description, maybe. Alphabet's just always ruining it. It's really funny if you watch, like, older YouTube videos and someone's like, check out the card, and then, like, point, but there's, like, nothing there. <laughs> it's just like, oh. Yeah, they promised that that would continue to work it on doesn't. older videos. They lied. It doesn't. 
Well, Netflix might have a little legal trouble, but I think they're gonna be fine because they are solidly still in number one, but all these other services are nipping at their heels. And it turns out that when people are watching TV, yeah, most of the people, you know, in parentheses, old people, mm. are watching regular TV, but streaming is gaining quickly. Streaming accounts for nearly one-fifth of total U.S. TV watching, according to Nielsen. Yeah, how about that? What are the other four? Telecommunications companies have already bought up all the internet service providers, so this isn't relevant. You just you're gonna whatever you're paying for cable, TV, and internet now, you're soon gonna pay for internet only. Uh, so we've got uh, this is tough to read. It's very small. Uh, Netflix is yellow. That's the big one, and YouTube's then YouTube green. is green. Hulu yeah. is purple, and Amazon is blue. Oh, are they just doing? Well, okay. and then other. I assume other would be cable. No, this this is this chart is just video streaming this is everything and then blue is but what are the other what else is everything well it's gonna be like hbo's got one showtime's got one cbs but, got one but the there's two graphs there in that image one yeah, this is, is for everything like, yes and then this blue is streaming and yeah. then this breaks down this, the blue this blue but what's right? in the gray just other services other than the no, no other side the original TV, regular tv i would think that that bar would be much smaller no there's still the vast majority. Most Does people. that include like radio plays? It's mostly thanks to the elderly that that's as large as radio. I was making a joke. But <laughs> <laughs> I I struggle to. I know no one my own age or even like anywhere around my age who still has cable. How do you think all of those reality shows on like the Discovery Channel and all those you know Bible shows and Nazi shows and stuff? How Everyone do they loves stay the Nazi business? shows. Yeah, there are people who just. I, I my family. Uh, you know, some of the older people in my family, uh, some of which have died at this point, but like we would go there for Christmas or whatever, whenever the, an event came up, a birthday or something, and that TV was never off. Yeah. And it was always in one of those channels. Ain't nobody got time for that. Well, actually, a lot of people do because they're retired and near death. <laughs> yes. Well, we talked about the, uh, the, the flip phone, the, uh, the Razor. And uh, it didn't test well, had some problems, but it seems like now, do you think, did you care about a flip phone? Is that something you want? Krista, what do you think? I don't really care about it. I feel like this might be the, another 3D TV. <laughs> yeah. And they've decided that this is the new thing, but who, well, does anybody want this? I do like the idea of like the, like the actual keyboard, like your new phone, Wendell. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, show your phone off. I, I haven't got it in here. It's still, I haven't got all my stuff copied on it. Oh, you're still, are you still <laughs> messing with it? <laughs> you're still, you're you were so backup. salty at lunch yeah. the other day because you couldn't get everything off of it. And it's like, I was like, man, I've never seen Wendell so angry at a piece of technology. It's, uh, it's big and thick and hefty. <laughs> it's T-H-I-C-C. -C. That's it's the trade-off. We'll but have, it's, got the, it's got the keyboard, though. Yeah, we might have a review later this week, probably early next. Anyway, uh, that's a gimmick that nobody cares about, and that's the reason it took you like six months to get it. <laughs> I care. It's a small subset of people, and I think there's a small subset of people who care about these stupid flip phones. Uh, Samsung announces Galaxy Z Flip with the world's first foldable glass display. Uh, somebody needs to give Samsung a memo that just because it contains silicon doesn't mean that it's glass. But, you know. Well, I think there's like a gap, right? It doesn't actually fold. No, it does. It does? Yeah, I think so. Hit the video. There's a video up there. But there's a side-by-side -side down here. See, isn't, isn't this being offset? Mm-mm. I think that, that uh, there's a lot of people that have complained that it's like freaking out and breaking on the internet since this article was published. Like if it was cold, apparently, or something, and it just like crunched and just was weird. Sure. It should just not be in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. So yeah, again, I don't really see the. Oh, the I don't. I don't like that animation. Something about that's unnerving. Uh, I could maybe see the other one where like it unfolds to be a bigger screen, like that being useful. But a regular size phone unfolding like this, I, I just don't see the utility. And it's expensive, thirteen hundred dollar. But I mean, isn't just, that cheaper than the other one? Uh, the razor isn't the razor like two grand? Yeah, I don't know. No, I think the I think the fancy one that's a double screen is like two grand. Oh, oh that's got some so hot loud. music. Loud. No, you can get it in this like iridescent, or you can get it in gold. Woo! And then it spins around. <laughs> so exciting! Why well, would just? They can't hear that, right? Uh, they sound. might barely hear it through this microphone. Oh, yeah, but like it's not actually. It's no, the desktop doesn't play yeah. it. Yeah. Stop trying to make foldable things a thing. It's not a thing. 
It was at one time, but that was Might before be. we discovered a full glass display. Which well, it is made nice. sense to have the other ones like that because there was a keypad that you needed to protect. Yeah. I feel like the people that are making Android phones that have a keyboard need to get one of the vintage T-Mobile sidekicks and be like, this is what you need to do. Do this. The, they don't understand. The, the physical keyboard's not coming back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mind them. <laughs> I don't know if I, like, it wouldn't be a high enough priority for me to yeah, actually, yeah. like, seek out a phone like that. But if my phone you're, had that, I wouldn't care. You're not going to trade real estate. At this point, this is terrible, but I just kind of look for a phone with a good camera. <laughs> like, I'm like, I want a nice camera. So Probably an iPhone. Yeah. I'm, I, oh I don't God. really want to switch to that, though. <laughs> you cannot get an iPhone, Chris. I don't really want to because everything else I have is Android. Oh, except that iPad. <laughs> Apple is assimilating Chris this slowly. You get just one I little... I use Procreate on the iPad. That's it. It's, it's like the coronavirus, Chris. One little infection. And, and then all of now a sudden, the whole ecosystem is now... The Chinese Communist Party falls. Well, Microsoft, we talked about their uh, ad that they put in WordPad, which was maybe not it's really an ad. Tacky. It was a bad idea, but it wasn't really tacky. trying to sell you anything. It was just like, hey, maybe you should get Microsoft Office. Well, they, they haven't stopped there. Microsoft flirts with a new antitrust challenge with the new start menu based Edge ads. So this MS Power user <laughs> goes on to, uh, it's like, oh, you're using Firefox? Well, you could use Edge. And uh, isn't this what Microsoft got in trouble for a long time ago? <laughs> they did get in a lot of trouble for it. Stop trying to make Edge happen. All those it's people have been fired, so no one remembers. <laughs> in in uh, Monday's news, we learned that the FTC was looking into all the big companies to look for things like this because they have been asleep for 10 years, apparently. Well, but that was mergers. Microsoft, I mean, th they didn't even need a merger. They've been doing this themselves. <laughs> so, yeah. Distasteful. But they've certainly been doing those. Remember the old, uh, like, Edge uses 10% less memory than Chrome. Yeah. Like, they've been doing that for a while. So maybe they think they'll just keep getting away with it. <laughs> I bet the EU will have something to say about that. Probably. Oh, we need some more money. Who can we, who can we find? Yeah, that's a, another juicy target. And we have uh, Windows 10X, which is a dual display Windows. It's for devices that have two screens, you know, natively. Not just extra monitors, but you know, like clamshell. I guess foldable phones, for example, if we ever go back to a Windows phone, which, dear God, no. No. Well, no. foldable still is one display, technically. But uh, anyway, special OS, and they have a promise for that OS. Microsoft promises the Windows 10X updates will take less than 90 seconds. Windows update is getting better on the 10X OS. So 10X is for the dual screen devices, for whatever reason. And uh, I guess Microsoft is acknowledging that the Windows update process has become just as likely to destroy your machine as it is to actually update it. So apparently they're going to do like a cutover method where it preps another version of the OS with the update and then just reboots you into that version. Which I guess that's not a bad idea. So that means that your computer is going to be doing terrible things in the background during an update and it's going to be basically unusable. Kind of like it is now. And it's going to take a lot more disk space. A lot Great. more real estate. Oh, those people with the 256 gig laptop, my which, heart goes out to you. And plus, this is going to be on devices, <laughs> which are already limited in space because they're more, you know, like mobile, that dual screen type of deal. Yeah. Thanks, so, Microsoft. Sounds great. In this office, we use Microsoft Teams. It's terrible. Uh, it has <laughs> Bummer Bert illustrations, and that makes it all right. Oh, my God. And if you have to be on more than one team, just Forget kill it. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's awful. But uh, we used Skype before that, and it, that was way worse. <laughs> Skype is literal dog shit. It's really difficult to pick a good communication software. IRC. Yeah, but that's not. I mean, it doesn't have like the... We have trouble onboarding new people to IRC. <laughs> but also, it doesn't... You don't get the, you know, storage and searchability. <laughs> Emojis. All the time. GIFs. Yeah, this one. <laughs> Teams has GIFs, man. Anyway. That's it's worth it. IBM has not made that mistake they've decided to go another direction which is a big deal ibm picks slack over microsoft teams for its 350,000 employees it's a big win for slack slack is kind of expensive though yeah how you like their logo krista it's fine it's exactly how i feel about it it is fine they redesigned like last year sometime it's it's it was, like in the summer with emojis why is it so successful i don't know because 
a cha- software doesn't need a ton of useless bells and whistles. To it make needs it bummer bird illustrations. It, That's a requirement. It is funny. Like the story of stealth is kind of funny. I mean, the story of teams is kind of funny. It's like you got this team in stealth mode that uh, is working on something, and it's like, oh, it's going to solve all the problems of teams, like where you can leave a chat on one device and pick it up on another device, and doesn't you can, work. You, yeah, and it's and then it's and then Microsoft is like, oh, let's make this a real product. And then they just keep glomming things on, and then it's like, this doesn't work for anybody anymore. Trying to do everything for everybody, we now have an unusable product. I like to imagine they're like in a board meeting, and someone, you know, they <laughs> invite some guy from accounting, and it's just like, what if we did this? And everyone's like, well, I don't really like that idea, but I like this person, so. <laughs> it's the life cycle of a Microsoft product. Right now, there's a, there's a team in stealth mode working on the team's replacement. And so in five years, Teams is just going to be summarily taken out back and shot when this new chat product comes. I mean, Google's been doing the same thing. There's There's been a new version of, of Google Chat or Hangouts or whatever every year for the last 10 years. It's just, we've forgotten how to make software that people will actually use as a species. Like, it's just, we've it's, it's so bad. Remember when Yahoo had so much money? So much money. They were on top of the world. They had Remember so they much had web money, rings? they could have bought Google. Oh. And, uh, that was, was a thing that almost happened. Yeah. What was the girl's name? Meyer? Marissa Meyer? Marissa Meyer. From Google went to Yahoo. Oh, and everybody was like, oh my gosh, she's a strong, independent woman. And she's going to lead them into the promised land. Well, she didn't. <laughs> and in fact... <laughs> Yahoo and Tumblr lost 33% of their web traffic in the past several years. I don't, I don't really blame Marissa Meyer for that. I just... I think that there wasn't very much chance that anybody could save Yahoo, and she did not save Yahoo. Well, and, and Tumblr, Tumblr, Tumblr did the giant like porn ban. Yeah, they took away the porn, and that, that'll cost you. <laughs> well, Never. apparently it was, it was being used for like child porn a lot, and they couldn't come up with tools to deal with it, so like just well, none. Never underestimate the power of porn in terms of running the internet, <laughs> because you will lose if you underestimate it. So, I don't think we're losing anything of value. It's time to put them to bed. Burn that forest and let some green shoots pop up. That's what I say. It's crazy. The Yahoo groups, I think, was one of the most used things on Yahoo. And they were like, ah, you know, it's costing us a lot to run this service. You think maybe because people are still using it is why it costs you a lot to run the service? Ah, let's just kill it. No, the real rock star was Yahoo Answers. (laughs) Ooh, yeah. Uh, Well, uh, SpaceX, you know, they've been killing it. They're putting up their Starlink satellites. Everything's going well. They're testing things. They're not blowing up. (laughs) They actually got one up at the space station, and they say that they're ready. They're ready to put those soft, sensitive meat bags into those (laughs) giant firecrackers. It's a weird way of doing it. The first crewed SpaceX flight could happen around May 7th. I'm sure we'll report on it again then. There it is. Docked. Ready to expunge its meat bags into the space station <laughs> or shuttle them safely to the ocean in the event of an abort that would never happen <clears throat> be exciting for whoever goes up i think you can prepay for uh, it's a million bucks uh if you want to go to space and the and the dragon prepay easy just a quick quick payment Put out a deposit yeah. yeah it doesn't include meals can you bring astronaut ice cream no, with you yourself? Can't bring can you anything. put them in your pocket? No, that's where they get you. They uh, get you up there and they're like, you want a $30 salad? And you're <laughs> so like, we well, you'll take it because that's all you can eat. How about a bottled water for $30 as well? Amazon, you know, you might, if you're, if you're young enough not to remember the times before, before recorded history, Amazon actually sold books mostly. They were a bookstore. That's how they sort of came to power. And they still have a massive amount of the book selling volume, which makes this a little bit disturbing because uh, Amazon has decided to memory hole some books. And yeah, they're kind of disgusting books in a lot of ways. But where does it end? The retailer once said it would sell the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now it has banished objectionable, vol- objectionable volumes and has agreed to erasing the swastikas from a photo of a book about a Nazi takeover. So, yeah. Thanks, Amazon. If it's like from a historical perspective, especially, like, why would you? Well, I say that's the thing. So most of them are, you know, like clan books and the, you know, the, the rock will rise again type of stuff. <laughs> but they have that show, uh, Man in the High Castle, which is an Amazon original. Yeah. So someone wrote a book about that and had stills from the production. But in order to be on Amazon, a book about a show that's on Amazon, 
sold on Amazon cannot be sold on Amazon if it has the swastikas that are in the show that's on Amazon <laughs> that was made by Amazon. I have a headache. Uh, can you follow that? <laughs> Is this what cancel culture does? Because if so, I need to get on the first was, SpaceX flight out of here. The real question is, this, was this manually flagged or was this just like, hey, we think there's a swastika in this image. You can't sell it. No, here. I think there was like a negotiation and they wow. agreed to take it out. And, it, and there was a Wolfenstein game that decided to use like a new kind of just made up thing instead of uh, swastikas. Wow. We need to remember that that happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, you know, you, you think, oh, who could deny that that happened? And it's like, people do that, though. That's that's in, a thing. In a hundred years, people will be saying, oh, they just did that for reality TV. And it's like, what? Reality TV <laughs> no. wasn't a thing. No. <laughs> no. What are you, what are you doing? The, the, like, show Hogan's Heroes as a historical <laughs> record. Like, no, look how good. It was, that was fine. They liked it. <laughs> they think, like, The Bachelor and The Bachelorette are, like, courting rituals. Is, is the fact that Hogan's Heroes would be impossible to produce today, whereas The Man in the High Castle would have been impossible to produce in those days, it's does that say something that, about the direction yeah. that we're going? <laughs> I think that direction is a, a downward slope. <laughs> and it's sharpening. It's actually a curve. <laughs> I definitely feel the, uh, the feel of acceleration. Now, Krista, you are not a big consumer of vegetables. I like some, but I'm... Pre- particular about by some you mean like two i like (laughs) kale that's one i like spinach that's two that's kind of the same thing hall's lozenges do not count as vegetables (laughs) no that's over there Uh, i like corn syrup no (laughs) mostly syrup i like peppers like uh, bell peppers a lot actually and celery and like a few other things like cooked into other stuff that's like i'll eat peas but only if they're in like other food i won't eat them by themselves that's less than 10 yeah. Well, perhaps if you were to go to work for Google, Krista, they could fix this flaw in your personality. If they were willing to pay for it, sure. Uh, well, they have the secret. How Google guides employees to eat their vegetables. Spoiler, they paid They, they paid for their breakfast and their lunch and their food. Well, they manipulated them into having first choice of like fruits and crap like that as opposed to like M&Ms. And they would like hide the M&Ms away in a drawer. It's like, all oh, the fruit's out here. The M&M's are in the drawer. I was but like, well, it, I am hungry. It is super easy to make good food choices when you have really good chefs preparing it. Yeah. And it's just there ready to eat and it's free. Yeah. I think I could definitely, like, get on a better eating plan <laughs> if it were just given to me and it was done by professionals every day. And they talked to this woman in the article and she was like, yeah, you know, I usually just take like cereal or a bagel or something, but these, you know, this spinach salad or whatever is really amazing <laughs> and it's free and I'm a lot healthier now. So I think I can never work anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, oh no. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> like the frog in the meme. <laughs> yeah. That is quite a benefit. I mean, you know, you're, you're, uh, it's going to have a lot of knock on effects in your life if you're eating healthier, I guess. Do you think though, like they start eating healthier and they're like working out and stuff and it's like, Oh my gosh, I don't want to work here, but I have to because yeah, otherwise I can't yeah. can eat you, well and work out. Well, can you imagine if, you know, in 50 or 100 years, it's Ray Kurzweil's version of the future where when you stop eating at the uh, the employee canteen, the necessary manipulations that have been done to the food that they're feeding you will cause you to die. Like you're eating all of the amino acids and stuff like that that's reversing your telomeres. Life uh, finds a way, though. <laughs> that's like, I'm 150 years old. If I don't eat this kale salad, I'm going to die. I have to continue that's, working. That was Dude. the whole plot of Jurassic Park where they like engineered something in where like if the dinosaurs didn't eat the park food after seven days, they're supposed to die. But they Yeah, didn't. but we haven't been genetically engineered. Now, do you think if Kurzweil gave up on his like 10,000 vitamins a day? Like what do you think yeah, would happen? I think, think he just, just, he's dead the next day. It's, it's, it, it's, it's like instant Mr. House from Fallout 4. What if he? What if the coronavirus disrupts the supply chain? Oh, man. He's probably got a bunker, though. <laughs> I guess those things will last for a long time. <laughs> he's like, he's going he back been? to the mortar and pestle. I haven't seen a picture of him lately. Uh, he's like 80, but if you look at a picture of him, he does look like he's like 55. That's impressive. It really is impressive. I keep, you know, when I first, I watched that documentary a while back probably been like five ten years and i was like oh, i wonder how long is this gonna last you gonna be dead in 10 years <laughs> he's still alive well uh we get a lot of amazon packages delivered here to the office and we have definitely we all agree that the when you get a package from ups 
It's a lot more reliable. It's a lot more professional. It's a lot better. Then we get those stupid blue trucks, those vans coming in. Yeah. They are terrible. They always come after work hours, and oh, then you don't get your package. They're awful. And Amazon, it seems, is not ignorant to that fact. Amazon acts as delivery partners in the U.S. Hundreds of jobs cut. So I don't it's know. after Christmas. I mean, is that surprising to anybody? No. I mean, yeah, we got surprising they, to these companies. Well, yeah. <laughs> they said they were going to do that all along. I mean, this was a great big experiment for, for Amazon. So. And why wouldn't you do it after christmas you know what i mean like you've already had your rush season if you remember amazon got all these people on board and they were like hey invest in these vans that we'll sell you and we'll set you up and we'll help you we're going to create you 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 become a a a delivery magnet and everything's going to be great and then and then it wasn't great people bought into that they're like yeah let's do this and now they just got a letter and it was like hey uh we don't need you anymore Oh, no. You want to sell us back those vans for about $10 a piece? (laughs) I wonder if it'll be, Krista, you could buy a used Amazon delivery van. Those vans are nice. Yeah. Wow, that's actually cool. That would be cool. They're probably too expensive. You should look into that. We'll be on the lookout for headlines like that, like, you know, destitute delivery driver just... Lives in hashtag van life, ain't Yeah, yeah. (laughs) What if you have to live in your Amazon delivery van outside of the Amazon warehouse where you now have to work just to survive? That would be a nightmare. We, what? we literally did a story about people to do that, that they just roam the country. Yeah, but now you're in the Amazon van. So like Amazon has already cost you your entire life <laughs> Do you think they make you repaint it too? Because they're like, we don't want you to be associated <laughs> with the brand. <laughs> but I'll die if I stop eating the Amazon kale. <laughs> Uh, well, virtual reality, uh, every time we talk about virtual reality, I bring up the fact that I just don't see where it's going. It's, it doesn't seem to be picking up. But perhaps I'm the fool because it is picking up, although not really that much. Virtual reality's biggest ever jump in users happened last month. It's people gearing up for Half-Life Alex, which is Valve's new VR experience. That's on our desktop this week. I think that's what that image is. These people it's apparently are playing a virtual reality game where you throw gang signs. It's <laughs> like <laughs> GTA, but... Uh, uh, oh man, a Beat Saber for throwing gang signs, like getting better at throwing gang signs. It was not... Amazing. Was it like 1.31? No, no, no. What was the number? It was a very low number. 1.09 from 1. 1.31 from 1.09. But it was the biggest jump ever. Yeah. And they expected that during December, obviously. But then in January, it persisted. People still buying stuff in January. People using their Christmas money. Oh, that's also a good point. All the red envelopes. Maxing out those cards. You know what's going to be great is uh, in terms of like, you know, the culture that we're going to be going into, which is never touch anything that anybody else has touched. You want to put a mask on your face that another person's been breathing into for the last 30 minutes while moving They do around. get like very sweaty. Very so we got, sweaty. Yeah, we did the yeah. VR thing and like it was fun, but like one of us would be playing, you know, Beat Saber and then you'd hand it off to the other and everyone would be like, ew. That, that, was, that was actually kind of fun. It would be cool to get, you know, like maybe I could buy one from somebody on the forum and then they, it's like, oh, this is actually in pretty good shape and, you know, I'm enjoying it. And then they send me the note that's like, Oh, and by the way, that was my exercise program. I lost 40 pounds <laughs> using that. And then it's just like... Uh. And you realize like 20 pounds is, is a sweat that's inside of the yeah, VR cushion around your eye. Yeah, lenses. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, I mean, it's probably fine. I used some Lysol wipes. It's probably fine. Well, so if we were doing that, I mean, <laughs> it was fine. I mean, it's Lysol very wipes, lemony. They don't absorb liquid. They are already waterlogged. Anyway, get on the bandwagon. You don't want to miss out, right? Get your VR today. Well, we talked last week about the uh, used Tesla, where Tesla decided, hey, you know what? You didn't pay for the autopilot. We're taking it back. And I think they got a little bit of a backlash. Yeah. Yeah. Tesla owner says the remotely disabled autopilot features have been restored. We predicted that. Tesla said this was a miscommunication. Let me translate miscommunication for you. This was bad press. Literally everybody covered this, and Tesla is sensitive to bad press. So to make it go away, they said, oops, our bad, it's fixed. How frustrating is that if you're the salesperson who has been instructed repeatedly, do not give them autopilot if it's a used car, and they're like, okay, I won't do that. And then someone comes in and throws a fuss, and then it's like, oh, here, no, dude, take autopilot. And it's like, what do you want me to do, manager? Are you insinuating that Tesla is a company that's run completely on hype? 
<laughs> I would never. Nine hundred dollars a share. Woo! <laughs> Did you see they're doing uh, another two billion at seven sixty seven a share? What? Yep. But they don't need to raise money. They're fine. They're profitable. But they're going to raise two billion uh, by diluting the stock. Uh, Keep buying it. You might miss out. <laughs> Uh, moving on to the robot, actually, that we were getting into the robot news there because that's an automated car. And continuing on with the robots, how about, hey, all new all-time stock market prices, right? Yay, contagion! <laughs> Woohoo! And if you're worried about being able to pick stocks in this environment, all-time high, you're supposed to buy low. <laughs> but it's all-time high. Maybe a robot could help. Robot analysts out with humans on investment picks, a study shows. So I was really curious about how long this study was, and it was apparently several different algorithms. So it's not just one robot. These are just uh, algorithms that different companies use for as part of their portfolio, I guess. And in general, they outperformed the human stock analysts. But they limited it. So these guys weren't the ones that were evaluating like tweets and momentum trading and stuff like that. They were doing like the old school valuation like actually just looking at the company. And apparently they did better than human beings. Neat. But this is not something that you would be able to put together based on public information about the company. Yeah, they have those old like history data and all that kind of stuff. But also the market kind of moves on tweets now, so... Uh, what a weird, weird place we live in. Do not pay. I gotta say... Whoever this guy is, he should get uh, whatever that thing they gave to Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> this, they should give to this guy, and they should give him the Nobel Prize that Greta's going to get. They should give him every award, because he is the hero that we need. And do not pay, if you don't know what that is, it's like the, it got you out of parking tickets, and uh, what was the other thing that it did? They keep adding features to it, and it's all these little things It's like, where you would get railroaded by the powers that be, but if you just have a little bit of legal knowledge, you could fight back. Well, the robot has a little bit of legal knowledge. <laughs> and this light, the latest one is the, the best one yet. This app automatically cancels and sues robocallers. It's the newest offering from consumer advocacy group Do Not Pay. So this seems so far more effective than the, uh, what the FTC and the FCC have done to block robocallers. Now, you can't ever get to the robocall because we just can't track them. I mean, we probably could, but the phone companies won't do it. And they won't spend the money to deal with it. So instead, what this thing does for you, it creates a fake credit card. You use that fake credit card. So you get the call and you say, oh, I am interested in whatever garbage they're trying to sell you. You use the fake credit card that's generated in the app. You buy whatever it is, which gives them or gives you their contact information because now you have a business transaction. Then it sues them on your behalf <laughs> using that information. God, that's so brilliant. <laughs> oh. You can win a maximum of $3,000 for these suits. Nice. And it's pretty, you know, it's cut and dry. <laughs> what are they going to argue? <laughs> that sounds pretty amazing. I do think it's still only for iPhone, though, which is oh, unfortunate. That is sad. They oh. need to do an Android version. So now you have two reasons to go to the iPhone, the camera, and do not pay. Well, to be fair, I mean, they probably experienced Java development on the Android platform and then sort of noped out. It's gotten better, but uh, yeah, I, I don't blame them. Well, we talked about Tesla and the autopilot, and maybe you get it when you buy used, maybe you don't. Depends on how many tweets you get, how many retweets you can get with your complaint. <laughs> it really seems to boil down to that. But what if there was an alternative, a cheaper alternative? Would you be brave enough to use it? No. <laughs> Car and Driver has is a $1,000 aftermarket add-on as capable as Tesla's Autopilot or Cadillac Super Cruise. This device from Comet.ai can steer, stop, and accelerate a car. We tested it against the factory systems. I did not see this one. That's just a phone. So, uh... Oh, look, there he is. No, this is the Cadillac one. So they measured... Super Cruise and Tesla's Autopilot and then this thing. Now this thing only hooks up to certain cars. Because um, it has to take over the... Uh, you have to have the drive-by-wire yeah. uh, features. But if you do have those, this thing will take over. But now here's the scary part. Only one camera. <laughs> How many cameras does the Tesla have? At least three. 
I think it's got some in the back too, though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It actually got two in the rear. Yeah. So, and I think the Cadillac is. Does the Cadillac use lidar? Some of those do. Yeah. Anyway, this is just a dash cam, and it's all based on that. So, so yeah. you go to like change lanes. It's like good luck, everybody. <laughs> like, you just cut everyone off. Like. So they tested it. Uh, now they felt that uh, Tesla's was overall the best. I think. This is a really long article. There's a lot of pictures in here. Comma AI. So here we go. Yeah, they said uh, it really was careful about following cars, which, eh, okay. And uh, slowed down too much during curves, and it warned them a lot when it shouldn't have. But they say, hey, if we can do this with one camera, you got to get better, right? We need to uh, take over the cameras that are already in, in, in the Tesla vehicle and then put this software with tesla's built-in cameras that would be the best of both worlds it's weird that it only has a dash cam because a lot of cars now newer models have the backup cam which i would think they would be able to access but the backup cam is not on all the time it only comes on when you go into reverse yeah that's true so you'd have to modify that i guess yeah i I don't know though i mean uh the big question there is like insurance right or fault in accidents if you're just Rolling your own, self-driving, you're probably going to get sued into oblivion if you kill somebody. It's probably still the driver's fault because the driver is only supposed to be an assistive technology, not a complete takeover. Yeah, but when it screws up, you probably don't have time to fix it. So now you're putting your entire future in the hands of this $1,000 dash cam. Mm. Mm. I'm sure there'll be some amazing stories coming out about that that we'll cover. Well, we're not big uh, sporting people here, and certainly not with FIFA, because the soccer, mm, it's not a thing here in the U.S. No one cares. I guess some, like, schools are doing it. But you shouldn't let your kid do that. Make them play American football and get brain damage. Like <laughs> the, the American good way. good Lord intended. <laughs> anyway, FIFA is uh, adopting some AI. FIFA experiments with AI for more accurate offside calls. Look, it's a robot. Yeah, I like this picture. Uh, they shot it. They <laughs> shot it like badly. His neck is still. There. Well, and so is his hand. Look. <laughs> uh, so this shows some uh, like here's here's what the AI can kind of see. Are you breaking the plane and going outside the field of play? And that's what the AI is going to be watching for. Meh. Well, neat. Cares? Engagement challenge. Something. Something. I don't know. If you're, if you're into sports, do you think this will work? Well, we've got the the baseball like strike zone robots now, which is interesting. I don't know if those take precedent over the umpire's call still. I wouldn't think so, but... But isn't part of the sport the people judging as well as the people playing? Or yeah, who else are you supposed to yell at? That's true. Because the idiot um, couldn't tell that it was, you know, a strike. Boy, Snake uh, he has some serious thoughts. He loves soccer. He's a big fan of Manchester United. But uh, he goes off sides a lot because <laughs> he doesn't have legs. He's just got his little slither tentacles. <laughs> slither tentacles. <laughs> we talk a lot about uh, you know blind people and Do we? becoming cybernetic and regaining their sight. We've done this story at least four times. Now, yeah. But usually what they do is they rebuild the retina. But what if your retina or your whole eye is just completely disconnected from your brain? What do you do then? <laughs> well, you get the matrix implant. A new implant for the blind people takes <laughs> the blind people. A new implant for blind people jacks directly into the brain. Researchers have successfully bypassed the eyes with a brain implant that allows rudimentary vision. Why do my eyes hurt? Because you've never used them before. <laughs> so this probably is amazing, though. This gal is the uh, the lab rat, I suppose you'd say. She's getting the implant. Here's the terrifying thing about this. It's not approved for long-term use. So she has to undergo brain surgery. Now, brain surgery is risky to put this plug into her head. But because it's not approved for long-term use, they're going to take it back out. Oh, <laughs> look, guys, just let me keep it. <laughs> nope. nope. Can't do it. So they uh, they show the kinds of things. Oh, here's a picture of it. Just, just jam that in the back of your neck. <laughs> I guess they have to connect the, the, all the, the little, matrix parallels are just all the little nerves to it. And uh, I guess this is kind of what she can see, which isn't incredible. Although they do see she could uh, like on a, a 
piece of paper, she could tell letters because they're so obvious, the hmm. lines. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, if you're going from seeing absolutely nothing to like just kind of getting she, hazy. She can't even detect light. Uh, something went wrong when I was trying to read this article, and it turned into an article about how blind people don't have schizophrenia. And I was like, that's a weird article for the news. I learned recently, I don't know how true this is, but we were discussing this the other day with my family. Apparently redheads don't feel pain in the same way that other people do. That doesn't seem correct. But I, I don't know. Some people at a family dinner were discussing it and they might be right. <laughs> I forgot to look it up. Seems easy to test. <laughs> well, it's, uh, my mom is a redhead and she goes on and on about how great like having kids or just she just had one but like she's like oh you know childbirth you barely feel it like it's so great and it's a magical experience and now I'm like that all like just casts my entire perception of her experience of childbirth into doubt because it's like if she's a redhead maybe you should have just, just grabbed a butter knife and popped it onto the stove burner and did some <laughs> just, experiments <laughs> do you feel that mom? <laughs> They do have that. Uh, now that I think about it, every time I've ever read a story about what's that disease where you can't feel pain? SIPA. It's always redheaded girls. Hmm. I don't know. But one of them had to have all of her teeth removed. Yeah, because it's easy like to like knock them. Oh, well, that's pleasant. Or like they'll rot out or something. You wouldn't know. No, it was uh, biting the inside of. Yeah, yeah, chewing oh. on your like cheek and stuff. Oh. I guess if you did that in your sleep, maybe. I don't know. Well, China, as we've stated before, are having a little trouble. And they are definitely our big uh, competitor when it comes to AI and designing new things. I guess Japan's probably in there, but they don't have the, the same resources as China. And when your enemy is down, I'll say it again, you kick them and you get more ahead. And that's what the Golden God has decided to do <laughs> when it comes to AI and supercomputing. White House earmarks new money for AI and quantum computing. Literally everything else had a budget cut, though. Yeah. <laughs> the, a, lot our, a lot of our park service crying right now. The, no, well, forget that. How about Social Security and Medicare? Yeah. <laughs> like, Literally bankrupt in like 20 years. They were already en route to being destroyed before we can ever touch them. But now it's almost a statistical certainty Yeah, that we are just paying, paying money into nothing. into nothing. Great. Guess I'm going to Canada. Oh, yeah. They'll love that. <laughs> You are technically going to Canada. I'm yeah. Oh, yeah, for LTX. Yeah. Uh, Everybody should go to LTX 2020. They're not going to give you any health care up there. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, one of the best stories we ever did, and it's something we always refer back to, and it's just such a great I, the, the thought of it is so wonderful to me, were the uh, stickers that fooled AI. The banana stickers. You just put a sticker on something, and it's just this crazy image that means nothing, and AI cannot handle it. Oh, man. Just, we should fund a level one Patreon to get one of those police license plate scanners and find what combination of stickers around the license plate foil the license plate scanner. Is, it, is there not a rule about obstructing a license plate, though? I think that you would you could do it without obstructing the license plate. Oh, you putting know, it on the car yeah. around it? Oh, they would, they would nail your ass to the wall for that. <laughs> would be very interesting That's one of those things out, that's though. like, we should probably know and not just think that that's okay. What if the, uh, did you see, there was, uh, there was some infosec researcher that made a dress out of yeah. uh, license plates and so like you could do a, a bumper sticker that's around your license plate that looks like other license plates they would for sure pull you over <laughs> and yeah. probably beat you into unconsciousness for doing that <laughs> but if you are if you don't have that level of uh, bravery there is something else you can do to destroy the robots that doesn't require a sticker it just, just requires another robot software that swaps out words can now fool the ai behind alexa and siri so seemingly innocuous changes, swapping out synonyms for other synonyms, makes for a passage that reads weird, but then these AI will derive completely different meanings from whatever the thing says. Uh, they had an example in here. Software used thesaurus. It's super effective. <laughs> I can't see it. It's such a short article. Does it? No, it doesn't continue. It's not a read more. But it was like, uh, so it does the... Uh, natural language thing and it finds the words that are most useful to the natural language interpreter and uses a synonym that to the person doesn't change the meaning of the word but the AI is just like I don't know what this is I don't know what you're trying to tell me bro so now we have a model for adversarial AI we can run that we can run the synonym thing through our input text 
feed that to the network that we're training, and then we solve the problem immediately overnight. And it just blows Siri's mind. She doesn't know <laughs> what to do. So, interesting. The other thing we constantly talk about is uh, robots in healthcare. You know, they're, they're detecting your cancers, and they're prescribing you drugs, and they're doing surgery, and they're getting better every day. Robot-assisted microsurgery passes human clinical trial. So this robot basically takes the shakes out of doing microsurgery because I think they were repairing somebody's lymph node or something. The lymph node wasn't draining correctly. And the the drain tubes for that are only 0.3 millimeters wide. So you have to have a really skilled surgeon to be able to pull that off successfully. So this surgeon was a skilled surgeon and they practiced on the machine. They were slower with the machine at first, but they got better with practice. And uh, they think that this machine will help other less skilled surgeons be as skilled as the skilled surgeon. They did six total, three with, three without. They were all successful. So it's not like the machine made them better necessarily, but maybe it would make it easier for other people. That just looks like a nightmare, doesn't can, it? Can you imagine being like, hey, we're going to do your surgery. Also, we're going to use this experimental robot machine. Good luck. Yeah, see, <laughs> and you're like, wait, you're already being put under. But we're going to knock uh, $500 off the cost of the surgery, and we're going to give this gift certificate to Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> So it's totally worth it. She let us do that. We want to see if the robot can do surgery on you. So we've got our maintenance person here. He normally does all the plumbing work for the hospital. He's going to run the machine. This is Javier. <laughs> he doesn't speak English, so don't try to talk to him. But he's going to be doing your surgery today. <laughs> oh. Well, Krista, how do you feel when you're queuing up on Overwatch that you might be launching drone Hellfire missiles into weddings? You know, it's not something I think about very much. Well, maybe you should. Uh, U.S. Army to use gamers' brainwaves to train military robot swarms. Oh, no. <laughs> the headline is not as inaccurate as I would have hoped that it would be. <laughs> also, like, this is one of those things, though, you know, where you make the joke of my idiot teammates have no brainwaves when they play <laughs> oh. any game. So, actually... Uh, it's never me who has no brainwaves. You will not be in trouble from this because it's actually strategy games. Not FPS games, which they're going to be mining data from. Um, actually, their strategy to Overwatch, but <laughs> uh, no, that's not the same. But uh, it's things like StarCraft, and uh, they mentioned the, the video games, and it's only twenty-five players. I imagine they're the really good ones, but they're going to look at the way that they retreat, and you know, like reform their armies and how they move around the map and stuff like that. And they're going to try to translate that into drone swarms. You think we could get the drone swarm to do? Uh that incredible like drone swarm projector you know blade runner thing that they did in china for new years because that was incredible it's like that but with uh you know bullets i just want instead of the, the air horn that you hear like you know when a storm or something is coming i just want it to be like it, base is under attack <laughs> to, like start yelling that i was visualizing like uh uh you know like mortar fire where the uh, the explosion smoke bomb, like there's a U.S. flag projected briefly in the smoke bomb, is it? It's like, oh no, USA, <laughs> USA. <laughs> <laughs> or you ever see those uh, smoke walls that they can do from battleships? Oh yeah, yeah. And they could like, just project like suck it on the other side. Of it. <laughs> Get wrecked. Dudes. You have such a big, you know, a big projector screen to work with there. <laughs> Taunting the enemy with the memes. <laughs> we have Pepe's. Putting Pepe's on your smoke wall. Never have I been more sure that the grape filter is ahead of us. <laughs> well, that might be true, and the filter might not look like anything we expected. It might look like uh, forbidden popcorn shrimp, as we'll find out on Friday. <laughs> but uh, we can at least know that we'll be comfortable and relaxed as we go gently into that good night. <laughs> Couple on coronavirus ship got wine delivered by drone to their cabin. This is the Japanese cruise ship where literally everybody's quarantined and more people test positive every day. Hashtag living in the future. I like how he literally said, yeah, the Coast Guard didn't know what was happening. <laughs> so, so these guys had a wine of the month subscription. Right. And they were on the drone ship, and the wine. Of, I guess they got like an email or something. It was like, hey, your wine of the month is coming up. And they contacted them, and they were like, hey, guess what? We're on the Corona ship. And you got to think that that wine of the month club was like, 
Oh, God. <laughs> the free advertising here is so delicious. Let us move heaven and earth to get you your wine on Meanwhile, that ship. there's someone who's like, you know, maybe we shouldn't send the drone onto a quarantine ship. And they're like, shut up, Bob. This is a great advertising opportunity. <laughs> we're going we're to pay zero dollars and get all this. It's going to be headline news. Wait and see. And here we go. Yeah. The... Uh uh, this was possible also, I think, because they had a stateroom or something that had their own private balcony. Yeah. So they can go out on their balcony and receive the drone shipment. But the question is, like, who handles the drone when it gets back? Does the drone get disinfected? I think the drone probably just drops its cargo and never even lands. Yeah, I don't think they necessarily have to touch the drone. Except, I mean, it's a glass bottle. Maybe the, wine. the, like, the hook that's hanging off of it. You could just jettison that into the water. <laughs> into they the just yeet it yeah. into yeah. The, uh, the balcony. For the return on investment you're going to get here, you could just launch the drone into the ocean. <laughs> Who cares? Free right? complimentary drone. <laughs> <laughs> just hang on to the drone, yeah. Uh, so, mm. I have to think that the Japanese Coast Guard might have been confused about it, but now that they've seen the headlines, probably not going to be as understanding about the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Probably angry. Although the article doesn't say. I was really looking for the paragraph that was like, and the, the Japanese Coast Guard was like, don't do that again, but I didn't see that. They said they were planning to get more. Although I think they're letting some of those people off that ship now. Yeah. You I have would to hope be, so. You have to be cleared for like two weeks, and then it's like, okay, we'll let you off. Two weeks. But is it the gestation period, 28 days? The gestation period? <laughs> What's it called? I, I know it's not that, but I cannot remember now that you've asked oh, me. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a... Right. Uh, no, I don't know. What do we got for Friday? <laughs> it's gone. Uh, so much nonsense. What's left? Isn't it hardware? Security. Oh. And uh, nonsense. And nonsense. Prepare Krista. your butts. Krista. Bye! Bye!